Welcome to Talking Technicals here on Money Life, where we try to dig into what the numbers and the charts are showing us. And we do that with the help of experts. And today's expert is Jeremy Newsom. He is the founder of Real Life Trading. He's the author of two books. His most recent, Master Yourself, Master the Markets, came out late last year. His prior book, Money Grows on Trees. If you want to learn more about him and his books, you're going to jeremynewsom.com. Jeremy, J-E-R-R-E-M-Y, jeremynewsom.com. Also, to learn about real life trading, it is reallifetrading.com. Jeremy Newsom, it's great to have you back on Money Life. My man. Thank you, dude. Appreciate it. I love talking technical analysis when we've got a market that's trading at record highs because, <laughs> because we're now at a spot on the charts where you don't have any experience. We've gotten to the edge of the map. And I always use the example of what they did before the world was charted territory, which is they here's where the known world is. And then they would put this line that said, here there be monsters. Now, they didn't necessarily know that there were monsters. They just didn't have any charting. So I guess the question is, with the market where it's at right now, are we at a spot where there's more land to go, or are we about to find out that there are monsters off the edge? I like that, man. That's a really good example. You know, for me, what a lot of people probably need to be considering or just thinking about is the fact that, yes, most of the companies, Apple, Google, Amazon, NVIDIA, Meta, and then, of course, the NASDAQ itself, which is pretty much all those companies. As you said, Chuck, we're at the highest price we've ever been in human history, ever. And those are really generally pretty good times to kind of do what a lot of people call trim and trail, which is let's say you have whatever, 100 shares of Apple. You can sell 30, and then you only have 70 remaining, and then you have a stop loss or some level of protection that you are trailing the movement of the company. Maybe you're doing a 10 EMA or an eight exponential moving average, but you're trailing it pretty aggressively so that if and when you have a nice dip, correction, retracement, or pullback, then you don't have to you know, have the pain of holding through that, that correction. And for right now, man, that's, that's what I'm doing, and that's very, very soon for me where, believe it or not, this will be a bold statement, but I'm going to be 100% in cash. I'm going to sell every stock that I own because I think it's too easy right now or too high. It's too easy. Everything is going straight up. And when the elections coming up around the corner, the summer months in October, you know, October is usually a little bit of a weaker month anyway. So elections coming up, we're in the summer. We're at all time highs. I hit my profit target for the year. No reason not to be all up in cash up here for me. Is that a sell in May and go away kind of strategy where we're past May, but the market was running. So you let it run. And again, maybe you started doing trim and trail or is there some sort of a sign that you are looking for that, you know, as Bill Engvall says, as a comedian, you know, there's your sign. Are you looking for something <laughs> specific where there's your sign? I'm on cash. Good question, but not, not really. I mean, honestly, it's just going to be a sell into strength. Kind of like you're saying, sell, sell in May and go away. It truly is going to be just taking advantage of the fact that the NASDAQ is up right at 28% on the year, 30% on the year. Um, I mean, that's amazing. That is amazing. And that we, we had a good little pullback not that long ago, back in April, a good little six percenter. And that's really what's creating and causing this catapult. But I just think that I feel like we're, we're just so high, and there's a lot of people that are beginning to reach out to me. Um, I don't know, you know this, Chuck, but, like, but, I, but I've been doing this for a while, right? I've been trading for a while. So I'm starting to get people that I haven't talked to <laughs> in like eight years. Like, hey, man, what do you think about the stock market? And that's usually a, a unfortunate sign where when everyone starts talking about it, thinking about it, asking about it, getting interested in it, that's a good sign for me that we're a little bit too high. So it's one of those moments that it's okay to be risk off for a little bit. But risk off also means that you're anticipating a market pullback. And that gets us back yeah. from the uncharted territory of record highs to charted territory, mm -hmm. ground that has been plowed. So yep. while you're going to the sidelines, what do you expect is happening to the market? I mean, what is the level that's going to wind up being support? And, and are we going back there? Or what happens if we break through that on the downside? Yeah, totally. I mean, honestly, I just think that we, we probably just circle back to the previous all-time um realistically i mean like let's just take amazon as a good example amazon's had a really really beautiful breakout but its previous all-time high was like that 188 price range 
and it just hit 200 earlier today and earlier this week. So I was like, yeah, sure. It hits 200, pulls back to 185. Good spot to buy. Like, that wouldn't be a terrifying p- place at all. On the queues, 450 would be amazing. Again, the 500 mark just seems a little, I mean, that's a, that's a grandma number, <laughs> right? 500, like that's where we're at on the QQQ. So I was like, yeah, pull back to 440, 450. I mean, you know, 50 points, 10%. That'd be fantastic. I would love that. And I'd be very interested to see if it's, if it's going to happen. Um, and that's what I'm waiting for. But again, I will be doing a little bit of day trading on the way down or as we trade sideways. I'll do some option sales. I'll do some scanning. But from a big investment portfolio position, I love to just I'm gonna take some profits up here, man. In terms of getting back in, like I said, sell mm-hmm. and may go away is kind of the strategy you're talking about, except we're in July yeah. and you were talking yeah. about the election. Sell and may and go yeah. away is typically you're buying back in as we get towards election season. So is this mm-hmm. move out likely to be through the election? And what will it take? Like, will we have to have gotten down to that support level for you to say, okay, time to go? Yeah, uh, I, I believe so. Uh, for me to really, really strongly get back in, I, I do think that we need somewhere between a 6 and 10% pullback. Pretty much at 6%, I'll start redeploying capital. And uh, I'll sell some puts. I will put in some limit orders. Uh, I'll start sprinkling in some shares and making some some re additional purchases, but usually on pullbacks like this, again for me, and this is this is a quite rare event also uh, for me just to be saying that I'm going all the cash and doing it. It doesn't ha- it has only happened like three or four times in the last ten years. So I, I just really 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 feel like we're quite high. So I'm thinking at this stage any pullback that we get. Uh, would be warranted coming into the election. I I personally, and I agree with you, Chuck, that like that November to April is generally where I make the most money anyway, oftentimes. So I will be kind of expecting that late September, October event where elections are coming. I'll be deploying some capital. Elections hit. We find out who wins. And then, and again, my prediction is Trump just so that that's there. And that's recorded. <laughs> and I think that from that uh, at that point, we pause for a little bit, a month or two, and then we go higher. I mean, that's the thing, uh, the message I want to leave your listeners today as well is that we do end up going higher. I'm not calling for the end of the world by any stretch. I'm just being cautious up here and just locking in profits. When you get back in, you're talking about going all out. You know, you, you, you were trim yep. and trail is where you yep. want to be heading to a spot where you believe you will be 100% out. So yep. when you come back in, will it be the buying equivalent of trim and trail? In other words, yeah, I'm I'm mm, coming in slowly, or will it be both feet jump in cannonball? Coming in slowly, my man. Yeah, um, I will. Uh, pretty much, I would say best case scenario, late November, I'll have fifty percent of my positions back into the markets, back deployed, and I'll just have I'll have some cash. And I will be in cash a little bit right now because I also just kind of feel like the real estate market is a little high also. So I feel like there should there could be some good little pullbacks or some corrections, maybe uncertain in some markets. I'm seeing a lot of price reductions. I moved out to Laguna Beach, California. And so I'm driving around California a lot looking at some houses just, just to feel the pulse of the market. And I'm starting to see a lot of price drops and a lot of homes for sale. And uh I love real estate. I mean, I like, I, I really do enjoy making money in the markets, taking that cash and then, and then redeploying it into some other assets, you know, real estate being one of those. So for me, yeah, looking at some things, I will, I would like to have a little bit of cash stick, uh, stuck around just to see if there's anything else cool that pops up. Cause usually when I have cash, that's usually also when I create books, I have a lot of time on my hands. I start buying back my time. Um, I start finding other businesses to invest in. I start really getting into the mode of creation. Interesting. And in doing this, I mean, you're going 100% to cash. No thought of like, let's go to gold. Let's do alternatives. You know, is it a good time for Bitcoin? Any of those other sorts of things? That's been a real big conundrum for me. And yes, because I do think that Bitcoin and crypto is nice and low right now around that, you know, 55-ish area. 
I think that's a really good value spot. But my thought is, I, I feel like crypto leads the stock market anyway, Chuck, generally. And so crypto's already had the pullback. So I think the market's going to get one. But then my thought is, if the market has a really big one, which would be over 10%, which again, I'm not necessarily thinking it's going to happen. But if it does, I think then the crypto market would keep going down also. Um, but I really do feel like ultimately it's a conundrum that I haven't totally answered yet. But, you know, there's, I think that a lot of people have this stress at some point about having positions in cash and they're like, Oh, but you're losing money from inflation. You know, every minute that the cash is just sitting there. I don't know if that's entirely true uh, for a lot of situations because there's a lot of investors that don't have any liquidity. And I think that if you ever find yourself in a spot where you have liquidity, you generally, for most people that I've spoken with feel a lot more at ease because you have the flexibility and the you know the capacity to have actual buying power to make real big actual game changing decisions. Well, when you don't have cash, you generally don't have that. I got to ask because of the way you just phrased that. When you're going to cash, you're not actually pulling the money out and putting it in the mattress. I mean, you're sticking it somewhere where it's <laughs> yeah, true. something, right? Yeah, I mean it'll be, you know, the whatever 5% money market in Schwab um, as it sits there for a little bit, for sure. Um but again, at the same time, man, I mean, I love gold. I love silver. I'll definitely buy some physical silver and physical gold. And uh, I usually like buying coins, so I like doing that. But the actual ETF itself, I actually am quite bullish on silver. So I could take a quick little flyer with some, maybe some calls or a share, some shares or two on ticker symbol SLV. I do think that silver will end up hitting 34 by the end of the year. Um, so that chart looks really, really beautiful. But yeah, man, ultimately... It's just a spot right now where I, I just like being really nimble. And I think that's probably, <laughs> I'm not going to be putting it in the mattress for sure, but I will be staying flexible. Jeremy, great stuff as always. Thanks so much for joining me on the show. We'll talk to you again down the line and see whether you're back in the market or still on the sidelines then. You're the man. That's Jeremy Newsome, everybody. He is founder of Real Life Trading. It's reallifetrading.com. He also is the author of Master Yourself, Master the Markets, and Money Grows on Trees. Learn about him, the books, and more at his website, jeremynewsome.com. Jeremy with two R's. And he's on Twitter or X at Newsome Nugget.